Okay, so we're going to uh, work on solving quadratics by factoring and the, the square root principle. All right, so let's identify three types of factoring. So the first type of factoring is the greatest common factor, or GCF. Then the second would be the difference of two perfect squares, and then trinomials. All right, so let's write that down. So there's three different types of factoring. So we have greatest common factor, And then the difference of two perfect squares. And trinomials. That's when you do mass the product. Okay, so we're going to solve uh, quadratics by factoring to start off with. So uh, we all should be able to do this. We did a little bit, we've done a little bit of this in class. So always make sure the equation is set equal to zero. And then uh, make sure that your equation is in standard form. Uh, so recall standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. All right, and then you're going to uh, look for uh, factoring in this order. So you'd look for the GCF first. If you don't see the GCF, look for dots next. And then after that, then you do trinomials. Okay, always look for this order, in this order. Okay, so after that, after you factor, you're going to set each factor equal to zero. So set each factor equal to zero. And then after that, you're gonna solve. for the variable. Okay, so let's take a look at the first problem. I'm just gonna move everything up. Okay, so number one, we have four x squared minus nine. The first thing we always look for is the greatest common factor. So I have a four and a nine. Um, there is no number that goes into four and nine. Um, I do have an x squared, but there's an, not an x there's no x over here, so I can't factor that out. So the next thing I go for is to look to see is if there is uh, dots. And I notice that I have 4 and 9 are perfect squares. x is a perfect square. And it is different. And I only have two terms. So it is the difference of two perfect squares. So I'm going to set up my parentheses, two parentheses. I got to put a plus minus in each one. Take the square root of both of them. So the square root of 4x squared is 2x, and the square root of 9 is 3. Okay, make sure it's still set equal to 0. And then you're going to make your t chart. Set each factor equal to 0. 2x plus 3 equals 0. 2x minus 3 equals 0. And now you're going to solve. So minus 3 from both sides, I get 2x is equal to negative 3. Divide by 2, I get negative 3 halves. On the right side, add 3 to both sides, I get 2x equals positive 3. Divide by 2, I get 3 halves. All right, let's take a look at 2. So remember, you check for GCF first. Uh, and I notice there is a GCF. The GCF is 2x. And then inside the parentheses, 2x times what gives me 2x squared? That's x. And 2x times 5 gives me 10x. T-chart. Set each factor equal to zero. Oops. And solve. 
divide by 2, we get x is equal to 0. Add 5, we get x is equal to 5. Okay, I'm just going to pull it up a little bit more. Get rid of all this stuff here. Okay, so next we have uh, number three. We have x squared minus 4x equals 12. I noticed that it is not equal to zero. So uh, I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides because you always want to keep your x squared positive. So I'm going to subtract 12. So I get x squared minus 4x minus 12 is equal to zero. And now I'm going to factor. So uh, there is no GCF. It's definitely not dots because I have three terms, so I'm going to use master product. So I multiply the first times the last, and I get negative 12x squared. So say to yourself, what multiplies to 12 subtracts to 4 would be 6x and 2x. They have to get different signs, and I have to get negative 4 when I add. So I'm going to bring, so it's negative 6x and positive 2x. Bring down the front and the last. And now I'm going to factor by grouping. So there's a GCF is x times x minus 6. There's a plus here, so I put that on the outside. GCF is 2 times x minus 6. My factors are x plus 2, x minus 6 equals 0. T chart, we get x equals negative 2, and x is equal to positive 6. Okay, so let's try number 4. Okay, same thing. I noticed that it is not in the right order and it's not equal to zero. So I do notice though that my, my square, where my square is, my x squared, that this is positive. So this should be written as 2x squared plus 18 equals negative 15x. And then I'm going to add 15x to both sides. So I get 2x squared plus 15x plus 18 is equal to zero. Okay, so now we're going to factor. Um, now, especially when you have this leading coefficient here, when you have a trinomial, always check to see if you could get rid of this by doing GCF. Um, but two does not go divided into 15 evenly, so there is no GCF, so I'm gonna use master product. So I multiply these two together, and I get positive 36 x squared. So which two numbers multiply to 36, add to 15, that'd be 12 and 3. So that'd be 12x and 3x. They get the same signs, they're both going to be positive, that'll give me positive 15x. Bring down the 18, bring down the 2x squared. Okay, so now I'm going to factor by grouping. I group the first two, I group the last two, and then I'm going to factor using GCF. So the GCF is 2x times x plus 6. There's a plus here, so I put it on the outside. GCF is 3 times x plus 6. And now I'm going to set my factors up. 2x plus 3 times x plus 6 is equal to 0. T-chart. So I get over on the right, x is equal to negative 6. Uh, we would minus 3, we get 2x is equal to negative 3. So x is equal to negative 3 halves. Okay, so let's flip it over, and now we'll solve using the square root principle. Okay, so we're going to solve quadratics using the square root principle. The first thing you're going to do is you are going to isolate the x squared or the um, parentheses with the x squared. So let's write that down. Isolate your x squared or if you have this, you want to isolate the parentheses x squared. All right, to get rid of the square, you square root both sides. Okay, when you square root both sides, don't forget. The plus minus. Then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to solve for x. And then you will express your answer in simplest form or to the nearest hundred. So it depends on whatever they're asking. So express, I'll just put down both. Express and simplest radical form or nearest tenth 
hundredth, whatever they're asking. Um, and then if, if you have this, if you have a parenthesis squared equals a parenthesis squared, you need to double distribute. So double distribute, then solve. Okay, so let's take a look at the first example here. All right, so I have x squared is equal to 13. So my x squared, that's isolated, which means there's nothing else with my x squared. So right now I could just square root both sides. So I take the square root of both sides. So when you take the square root of a square, they cancel each other out. And I get x is equal to plus minus, don't forget that plus minus, the square root of 13. You cannot simplify the square root of 13. There's no perfect square that goes into 13. Uh, so if I had asked for the nearest hundredth, we're going to round to the nearest hundredth just for today. I'll get x is equal to plus minus. Just plug that into your calculator, the square root of 13, and you get 3.61. All right, let's take a look at two. So I notice that there is a four in front of my x squared, which means that my x squared is not isolated. So I divide by four. So I get x squared is equal to 25 over four. Four does not go into 25, so I'm gonna leave it like that. Square root both sides. So I get x equals plus minus the square root of 25 over the square root of four, because that's the same thing. And that comes out to be plus minus five halves. Okay, and let's try number three. So I notice when number three, I have a parenthesis squared, and it is isolated. There's nothing else with it. And when I say it's isolated, like there's not a two in front. I don't have a plus three in the back. So it is isolated there. So uh, I could just now just take the square root of both sides. So I get 3x plus 5 is equal to plus minus the square root of 14. All right, now I'm going to solve for x, so I'm going to minus 5. I'm going to put the minus 5 in front here because I can't add it with the radical because they're not like terms. So I get 3x is equal to negative 5 plus minus the square root of 14. Divide by 3. x is equal to negative 5 plus minus the square root of 14 over 3. And of course, there's multiple ways you can represent the answer. It could be written like this. Negative 5, x equals negative 5 plus the square root of 14. x is equal to negative 5 minus the square root of 14. It could be separated it could, uh, over 3, sorry, on each one. Uh, it could be written as fraction separated, like x is equal to... Uh, negative 5 thirds plus, min plus minus the square root of 14 over 3. So there's different ways that you can represent the answer. So it depends on what you're doing. If it's a free response, it really doesn't matter which way you represent the answer. Like this, you could separate it like this, you could separate it uh, into two fractions. It doesn't really uh, matter. Uh, if it's multiple choice, I mean, if you get up to here and you don't see the answers written like that, well, you might need to to try different way, different way to represent the answer. All right, so let's take a look at number four. I'm just gonna clean up the picture here. Okay, so notice number four, I have these parentheses squared on both sides. So you don't take the square root of both sides, because this is what happens if you square root both sides. If you square root both sides, you get x plus three is equal to x plus 13. Well, that doesn't help, because when I min minus x, I cancel it on both sides. So. That doesn't help, so I can't solve like that. So what you need to do is do x plus three times x plus three, because that's what x plus three squared means to do, equals x plus 13 times x plus 13, and you need to double distribute. All right, so on the left side, we get x squared, x times x is x squared, x times three is three x. Three times x, three x. Three times three, nine, which is x squared plus six x plus nine. On the right side, x times x is x squared. x times 13 is 13x. 13, 13 times x is 13x. 13, 13 times 13 is 169, which is x squared plus 26x plus 169. Okay, now this is nice because look, when I minus x squared from both sides, they cancel. So I'm left with 6x plus 9 is equal 26x plus 169. All right, now I'm going to subtract 6x. Oh, this is nice. 9 is equal to 20x plus 169. Just moving my stuff up a little bit. Uh, now I need to minus 169. 
So 9 minus 169 is negative 160 equals 20x. Divide by 20 on both sides, I get negative 8. Okay, so that's it. So we'll practice tomorrow in class tomorrow. Have a good night.